in this next topic, we'll, we'll talk about psoriasis. Psoriasis is a skin disease that causes red, itchy scale patches, most commonly on the knees, elbows, trunk, and scalp. Psoriasis is a common chronic disease with no cure. It tends to go through cycles, flaring for a few weeks or months, then subsiding for a while or going into remission. Treatments are available to help you manage symptoms, and you can incorporate lifestyle habits and coping strategies to help you live better with psoriasis because it has no cure. Psoriasis signs and symptoms can vary from person to person. Common signs and symptoms include red patches of skin covered with thick silvery scales, small scaling spots seen in children, uh, dry cracked skin that may bleed or itch, itching burning or soreness, thickened pitted or rigid nails, swollen and stiff joints. Psoriasis patches can range from a few spots of dandruff-like scaling uh, to major eruptions that cover large areas. The most common affected areas are the lower back, elbows, knees, legs, soles of the feet, scalp, face, and palms. Most types of psoriasis go through cycles, flaring for a few weeks or months, then subsiding for a time or even going into remission. Types of psoriasis include plague psoriasis, the most common form uh, is plague psoriasis. It's caused, it causes dry, raised red skin patches covered, covered with silvery scales. The plaques might be itchy or tender, and there may be uh, a few or many. They usually appear on elbows, knees, lower back, and scalp. And there's the nail psoriasis. Psoriasis can affect fingernails and toenails, causing pitting, abnormal nail growth, and discoloration. Psoria psoriatic nails might loosen and separate from the nail bed. Severe case may cause the nail to crumble. And it is a picture of uh, plague psoriasis, which has a silvery scale, and nail psoriasis, which causes the nail to grow uh, abnormal growth and discoloration. Gutate psoriasis. This type of primary, uh, this type primarily affects young adults and children. It's usually triggered by bacterial infections such as strep, strep, strep throat. It's marked by small drop-shaped drop scaling lesions on the trunk, arms, or legs. There's the inverse psoriasis. This mainly affects the skin folds of the groin, buttocks, and breasts. Inverse psoriasis causes smooth patches of red skin that worsen with the friction and sweating. Fungal infection may trigger this type of psoriasis. And the postular psoriasis. This rare form of psoriasis causes clearly defined post-filled lesions that occur in widespread patches or in smaller areas in the palms of the hands or the soles of the feet. And there are pictures of, of them. Last two types is erythrodermic erythor psoriasis, the least common type of psoriasis. Erythrodermic psoriasis can cover your, your entire body with a red peeling rash that can itch or burn intensely. And psoriatic arthritis. Psoriatic arthritis causes swollen, painful joints that are typical of arth arthritis. Arthritis is the swelling and tenderness of one or more of your joints. Sometimes the joints uh, symptoms are the first or only symptom or sign of psoriasis. And at times, only nail changes are seen. Symptoms range from mild to severe. And psoriatic arthritis, arthritis can affect any joint. It can cause stiffness and progressive joint damage that in the most serious cases may lead to permanent joint damage. If you suspect that you may have psoriasis, see your doctor. Also talk to your doctor if your psoriasis becomes severe or widespread, causes you discomfort and pain, causes you concern about the appearance of your skin, leads to joint problems such as pain, swelling, or inability to perform daily tasks, doesn't improve with treatments. Psoriasis is thought to be immune uh, is, is thought to be an immune system problem that causes the skin to regenerate at faster than normal rates. The most common types of psoriasis known as plague psoriasis, the rapid turnover of cells results in scales and red patches. Just what causes the immune system to malfunction isn't entirely clear. We believe both genetics and environmental factors play a role. The condition is not contagious. 
Many people who are predisposed to psoriasis may be free of symptoms for years until the disease is triggered by some environmental factor. Common psoriasis triggers include uh, infections such as strep throat, which is an infection at the back of your throat or other skin infections, weather, especially cold, dry conditions, injury, injury to the skin, such as a cut or scrape, a bug bite or a severe sunburn, stress, smoking and exposure to secondhand smoke, heavy alcohol consumption, certain medications including glycium, high blood pressure medications, and uh, anti-malarial drugs, rapid withdrawal of oral or systemic corticosteroids. Okay, so um, what puts you at risk of psor psoriasis? Um, anyone can develop psoriasis. Uh, about a third of instances begin in the patriotic state, patriotic years. Um, these factors can increase your risk. Um, family history, if it runs in the family, um, and you have your parents have it or your brothers have it, there's, there's most like more likely chance that you will have it. Um, stress, um, because stress can impact your immune system, high stress levels may increase your risk of psoriasis. Um, smoking, do not smoke. It's that easy. Um, it, it, it also increases, it increases the severity of the disease and it may be to reach a dangerous level. So don't smoke. <laughs> Next slide. Um, okay, so what could poss possibly happen if you have um, psoriasis? Um, well, there's a lot of conditions that um, can be caused by psoriasis and are linked to psoriasis. One thing um, which we said already is psoriatic arthritis, uh, which causes pain, stiffness, and swelling in around the joints. So your movements won't be that easy with this type of psoriasis. Um, eye conditions, uh, it's, it may damage your eyes. Obesity, um, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, other autoimmune diseases and hopefully next week we'll talk more in depth about autoimmune diseases um mental health conditions uh, well n nobody wants a big scar on their forearm let's say um and walks around with it and people always ask him what's that what's that what's that and he becomes insecure about it he doesn't want to go out he wants to cover it up so it can cause mental health conditions as well Uh, diagnosis, how does your doctor diagnose? Um, well, he will ask questions and examine your skin, uh, scalp and nails. Your doctor might take a small sample. Um, we covered this before, skin biopsy, which he examines it in the lab and sees exactly what it is. And he diagnoses it. All right, next slide. Okay, treatment to um, how can this be treated? What will the doctor do to stop the skin uh, condition? Um, well, it's, treatment generally uh, tries to stop skin, skin cells uh, from growing so quickly and to remove scales. These are the two goals of treatment. Um, the options that they have is using creams and ointment, uh, topical therapy, just gels, creams, things to put on your skin and hopefully make it better. Um, light therapy, in which they remove the skin, the, the scales. Or oral or injected medication, systemic medication. Um, which treatment you use depends on how severe the psoriasis is and how, how responsive it is and how persistent it is. It's a one-time thing. Maybe you don't need as much treatment as a person that has been having it as a child and stays and it won't go away. And Tad has a big thing on his back and he needs a lot of treatment. Uh, you might need to try different drugs or a combination of treatments. Um, so it's, there's no one solution fits all thing. It's, it depends. Next slide. So there, is, uh, there are three types of therapies, uh, topical therapy and light therapy and injected medications. 
uh, topical therapies such as corticosteroids, vitamin D analogs, retinoids, calcineur inhibitors, uh, salicylic acid, coal tar, Jekerman therapy, and anthraline. And light therapy uh, such as sunlight, UVB broadband, UVB narrowband, uh, Soralin plus ultraviolet A, a simer laser. And for the oral or injected medication, there are steroids, retinoids, methotrexates, cyclosporine, biologics, and other medications. Okay, although doctors choose treatment based on the type and severity of psoriasis and the areas of skin affected, uh, the traditional approach is to start with the mildest treatment, topical creams, and ultraviolet light therapy. Um, in people with t uh, typical skin lesions, plaques, plaques, then um, progress into stronger ones only if necessary. People with postular or erythrodermic psoriasis or associated arthritis usually need systemic therapy from the beginning of treatment. The goal is to find the most effective way to slow cell turnover with the fewest possible side effects. Gen honestly, generally, it, this is the pro process they go they use for most skin diseases. Um, but this talks specifically about psoriasis and how can you, how to deal with it. Slide. Okay, what normal everyday things you could do? Um, Self care measures to better manage psoriasis and feel your best. Um, take a bath. <laughs> um, uh, take daily baths. Everybody should do it. Uh, bathing daily helps remove scales and calm inflamed skin. Add bath oil, chloride, uh, oatmeal, and Epsom salts to the water and soak for at least 15 minutes. Use lukewarm water, mild soap that have added oils and fats. Um, yeah. Use moisturizer after bathing. Gently pat, dry, and apply a heavy ointment-based moisturizer while your skin still while your skin is still moist. For very dark, skin, dry skin, uh, oil may be preferable. Um, they may use staying pa uh, staying power than creams or lotions do. If moisturizing seems to improve your skin. Apply it one uh, to three times a day. Moisturizer also works for boils and carbuncles. Um, and for them not to spread, so just heads up. Uh, cover the affected area overnight. Before going to bed, apply ointment-based moisturizer uh, to the affected skin and wrap with plastic wrap. Uh, when you when you wake, remove the plastic and wash away the scales. Because there's a lot of processes that happen when you sleep. Uh, lifestyle and home remedies, again. Um, other things that you could do, expose your skin to small amounts of sunlight. Um, ask your doctor about the best ways to use natural sunlight to treat your skin. A controlled amount of sunlight can improve psoriasis, but too much can harm it. So there's a balance necessary um, for it to be helpful. Um, and so, this is the type of light therapy, which is exposing yourself to sunlight for a uh, right amount of time. Yes. Um, again, there's it's, it's a it's a balance. Too much hurts, and just that you need just enough. Um, apply medicated cream or ointment. This is topical therapy. Apply an over-the-counter cream or ointment containing hydrocortisone or salicylic acid to reduce itching and scaling. If you have scalp psoriasis, try a med a medicated shampoo. That contains coal tar. Um, there's a lot of coal tar based shampoos in the markets. Avoid psoriasis triggers. Anything that triggers psoriasis, uh, stay away from basically. Notice what triggers your psoriasis and take steps to prevent or avoid them. Or avoid them. Infections, injuries to your skin, stress, smoking, intense sun exposure can all worsen psoriasis. So we talked about the center already, but there's smoking, um, smoking, stress, and injuries that can also affect it. 
uh, avoid drinking alcohol. I'm pretty sure none of you guys drink alcohol. Well, unless you do. <laughs> uh, well, alcohol is bad for um, psoriasis treatment. Um, strive to maintain a healthy lifestyle. Being healthy in general, having a healthy lifestyle, eating healthy, exercising daily, um, it can help. And while after you exercise, make sure to take a shower, take a bath, and clean yourself because it may cause, um, cause, yeah. And just, uh, you can manage psoriasis by being active, eating well, and maintaining maintaining a healthy weight. So I just, I just want to stress the point to shower after exercise because it can be bad for the skin. Next, coping and support. Um, coping with psoriasis can be a challenge, especially if your affected skin covers a large area of your body or is visible to other people. Um, so again, we talked about mental health over the past few weeks. Um, it's important that the person is not very self-conscious about this and it doesn't cause depression or anything based on that. So um, the ongoing persistent nature of the disease and treatment challenges only add to the burden. So it's important to make sure that he's not having mental struggles over um, the thing. <laughs> it's like. It's the end of the presentation. Thanks for your attention. Thank <music> you.